tell you beautiful nerds a new comedy thriller is out on amazon prime that is interesting to say the least as soon as i saw the teaser for it i was like black people in a thriller comedy and jordan peele's name is nowhere to be found okay i'm intrigued in the rise of what said director has dubbed the social thriller filmmakers are becoming more creative and emboldened to tell stories about experiences of disenfranchised people in new and exciting ways in the first 20 minutes of this flick you might feel like you've seen this kind of movie before but you have not seen this movie before like nigga Trust me. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about what we're talking about. So smoke a bowl and have a swig of death punch and let's have a spoiler filled discussion about e but first, a prelude. In the year of our Lord 2018, taking inspiration from late bloomer coming of age stories and British horror comedies that tend to focus on the horror of being perceived in an embarrassing way, writer K.D. DeVia and director Carrie Williams made a short film with the intention of subverting the tropes of your weird science, Van Wilder, can't hardly wait type movies. I mean, it's already a subversion because it passes the Bechdel test and has people of color that aren't solely there to have their heritage shit on. I'm looking at you. Fucking but the film takes a bold step of giving these potential party goers a true emergency to deal with. The short won a bunch of awards at Sundance and South by Southwest and NBC Shortcuts and li like they won a bunch of shit. You're good. Then in 2022, Williams and Davida made a full length feature with the same name and general premise. And the premise is stressful. This movie starts out like a lot of different college party movies. Two buddies, one straight-laced and one more eccentric, plan an epic party night that will change their lives forever. This, for me personally, is actually gonna officially round out what I'm gonna call the Wild and Crazy Kids trilogy. Starting with Superbad and with Booksmart in the middle. Cause though each of them have different perspectives and have something very different to say, they all, first of all, they're all incredibly funny, but they all have similar character types and story beats. They even have the same kind of lame storyline in Booksmart and Superbad, where one friend is afraid to tell the other friend that they're gonna go to a different school next year. When I heard that, I literally rolled my eyes. Like, they could have just took that subplot out, but whatever, that's not a big part of the movie. The night takes an unexpected turn when the guys show up at home to pregame and find a strange young white woman has broken into their apartment and passed out on the floor. The boys want to help, but being aware of the terrible optics of the situation, like, just, honestly, this looks, this is just, this is just terrible. That's terrible. Carlos Kunle and Sean carefully weigh the pros and cons of calling the police. The script deliberately points out that the boys aren't just reacting from a selfish, straight, cis male point of view where they just couldn't be bothered and they'd rather go get fucked up. I mean, well... There's, there's a little bit of that. But mostly you can see that these kids are just terrified of having their lives ruined. And most importantly, they really want to help this girl, but just have no idea how to do it. There have been a plethora of raunchy party flicks, but most of them miss the mark when it comes to the perspective of women and or people of color. It's a thoughtful subversion of the genre because the main characters are constantly trying to navigate how they'll be perceived by others if they call the police or if they ask help from the quote unquote wrong people. Our male main character are throughout most of the film seen participating in respectability politics. Internalizing their own oppression and believing that the more quote unquote white they behave, the more deserving they are of respect and dignity. The friends even try to remember the most respectable non-black or brown person they know to call the cops in their stead. The film has a comedic voice to the dialogue that seems very similar to us, but in my opinion balances the comedy with the seriousness of the situation way better. Also, it actually makes sense. Us isn't, us doesn't make any fucking sense. Anyway, I only give this movie props because I imagine this was a difficult hurdle to clear since what the movie is talking about is, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to find the comedy in date rape and police brutality, but I mean, they did. I mean, do you know anyone who's actually been shot by the police? I don't know. No. Yes. My cousin. And they just showed up for, for, for no reason. His friend was trapping a little bit. His friend was trapping a little bit. Speaking of the comedy of this film, I want to talk about the cast because the writing, acting, and directing work in perfect tandem throughout. Donald Elise Watkins and RJ Seiler, who play students Kunle and Sean respectively, are incredible as the two leads. And so is their roommate Carlos, played by Sebastian McCon. One day that guy's gonna play the eccentric scientist in a space movie that comes up with a plan to save the world and he's gonna be awesome in it. He's just got that vibe. You sort of get the sense that these guys have formed a bond 
bond through feeling isolated as some of the only one percenter POCs that go to the school. Each character sounds different and has a very specific point of view too. Kunle is very sheltered and is a child of successful Nigerian immigrant parents. Sean is a street smart, double may care, loud mouth who thinks he knows the world's address. And Carlos is a lovable stoner rocket scientist who's definitely the sweetest guy in the group. Maybe the whole school. Like, I love this guy. He's adorable. It's kind of the Ed and Nettie dynamic, except except Carlos isn't a big old dum-dum. RJ Seiler was my MVP of this movie, though. I don't know why people don't talk about this guy like they talk about fucking Chalamet. Because he's just so charming and natural in this movie and in everything he does. Like, seriously, Hollywood. Next time you need an affable young Ansel Elgort type, just cast this guy instead. Anyway, the sadly obvious reason this movie is so unique and poignant is because it points a finger at the social landmines that people of color and women have to face every day. The female perspective isn't quite as fleshed out, but that's mostly because the black men are the main characters of the film. But like I mentioned, this did at least pass the Bechdel test, so... Golf clap for feminism. There are several examples in recent news stories that highlight how the pervasive fear of black people among whites is still very present in modern America. Blogger Dotton Richards told NPR in an interview, sometimes if I'm walking down a street or something, I am whistling Frozen songs just to prove that, hey, I have kids, I am not a threat to you, I just wanna go home to my family. I have personally experienced this too. If it's late at night and I'm walking down the sidewalk and I see a young white woman walking by herself coming my way, I cross the street. I'm trying to get as far away from this white girl as possible. It's, I mean, yeah, it that sounds kind of funny, the visual of a 6'2 black guy being afraid of a small woman. But the woman is most likely afraid too because men do men things. And the sad reality is that both of us are coming from a long history of brutalization, exploitation, and abuse. And studies show that women are twice as likely to suffer from PTSD than men, and on average, their symptoms last four times longer. And this film expertly weaves in and out out of this tragically comedic scenario without it feeling insensitive or gross. It was written by a Mexican woman and directed by a black man and as thoughtful as a film of this thematic nuance should be. This film is trying to bring levity to some touchy subjects and manages to have some meaningful commentary while taking you on a calamitous journey of farcical proportions. Despite the performances being very natural and some of the dialogue, I'm sure, I'm sure that there was some improv in there, but the writing and directing feels very precise and deliberate. And like I mentioned, it kind of has to be to pull a flick like this off. Like the scene where everyone finds out that the white girl is not in college but in high school was incredibly well blocked and paced. Like it was so tense and then immediately one of the funniest moments I've ever seen in a movie. Though there are plenty of laughs to be had with this movie, what ties the whole film together is Kunle's monologue at the end. We've seen this moment in the other Wild and Crazy Kids movies where the two friends who've had a spat reconcile at the end, but the stakes were so much more heightened in this film that when Kunle is describing what happened, it is heartbreaking. Though everyone is having a good time, you can tell that this character is emotionally petrified and is still carrying the trauma of that night and will probably carry it for the rest of his life. I honestly can't imagine anyone playing this scene better than Watkins did in this moment. That boy good. That boy is good. The more I think about this movie, the more I dig it. It had me thinking about the story for days after I saw it, and I haven't had that reaction from a comedic film since maybe Jojo Rabbit? Again, I love movies like this, and I'm glad that we got a Wild and Crazy Kids movie from my POC's perspective. On paper, this movie sounds like an ill-advised trivialization of systemic problems that America has been grappling with for decades, but Emergency manages to take these messy and complicated subjects and force us in this awkward place where we have to laugh to keep from crying. Oh, and then they make you cry, like a whole bunch. Like I was sucking my lip. It was it was a very intense, ugly cry. I'm I'm glad I watched this by myself. My ranking, I loved it. That's it for this review. Keep watching the channel for our weekly recaps of the boys and a review of Apple TV Pluses for all mankind. But until next time, stay safe, my little granola bars, and may the force be with you.